Lord, open my lips.
Lord, and see my suffering, come quickly to my aid. Shepherd of Israel, hear us. You lead Joseph's
Look, O Lord, and see my suffering. Come quickly to my aid. God is my Savior. I trust in Him and shall not fear. The Lord has fed us with the finest wheat. He has filled us with honey from the rock. Bring out your joy to God our strength. Shout in triumph to the God of Jacob. The trumpet of the new moon when the moon is full on our feet. He imposed the sorrow on Joseph when he went out against the land of Egypt. Your hands were freed from the Lord. He called in distress and I saved you. My people to my warning, O oh Israel, if only you would need. I am the 
Lord your God, who brought you from the land of Egypt. Open wide your mouth and I will fill it. Stubbornness of heart to follow their own desires. At once I will subdue their faults. Turn my hand. them with honey from the rock. Please all rise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. The Lord, the Lord has fed us with the finest wheat. He has filled us with honey from the rock. Please be seated. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. We see Jesus crowned with glory and honor because he suffered death, that through God's gracious will, he might taste death for the sake of all men. Indeed, it was fitting that when bringing many sons to glory God, for whom and through whom all things exist, should make their leader in the work of salvation perfect through suffering. The Word of the Lord. By your own blood, Lord, you brought us back to God. From every tribe and tongue and people and nation, you brought us back to God. Please all rise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. I have longed to eat this meal with you before I suffer. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. Holy prophecy promise of all that he will save us from our enemies from the hands of all who hate us. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies. He 
Elisha shall be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord to prepare His way. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from a night shall break upon us. Glory to the Father. And to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. I have longed to eat this meal with you before I suffer. The Father anointed Christ with the Holy Spirit to proclaim forgiveness to those in bondage. Let us call upon Him. Let us humbly call upon Colonel Priest. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. You went up to Jerusalem to suffer and to so enter into your glory. Bring your church to the Passover feast of heaven. Lord, have mercy on us. You were lifted high on the cross and pierced by the soldier's lance. Heal our wounds. Lord, have mercy on us. You made the cross the tree of life. Give its fruit to those in baptism. On the cross, you forgave the repentant thief. Forgive us our sins. Lord, have mercy on us. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say. of infinite compassion to love you is to be made holy 
fill our hearts with your love. By the death of your Son, you have given us hope, born of faith. By his rising again, fulfill this hope in the perfect love of heaven, where he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.
Please stand as we begin our Eucharistic celebration.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, in proximity of the celebration of the Christ who died, who was buried and resurrected, the heart and center of the entire history of salvation, we are gathered by virtue of the baptismal consecration and ministerial priesthood to proclaim God's marvelous works and to give thanks to the Father who in His Son, Jesus Christ, makes us a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people whom He acquired for His own. Even the oil and the chrism which we bless in this Eucharist reminds us of the multiple gifts which the Father through His Son in the Holy Spirit entrusts to the ministry of the Church. The common priesthood, the ministerial priesthood, and the comfort and the liberation of those in grave sickness and in the face of death. My beloved brothers in the priesthood, my beloved priest, God loves us very much. Unworthy though we are, and we are the first to confess our unworthiness, God has given us a share in His Son's consecration to the priestly service in His Church. God loves us very much. That is why we are priests. Let us thank and glorify God for His immense and wonderful love. Let us beg for His forgiveness for failing to be faithful to His love. Let us ask for the strength to be true to our calling, to be God's faithful witnesses in the world. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the, to the Lord, Lord our God. God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, who anointed your only begotten Son with the Holy Spirit and made him Christ and Lord, graciously grant that being made sharers in his consecration, we may bear witness to your redemption in the world through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the lowly, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God to comfort all who mourn, to place on those who mourn in Zion a diadem instead of ashes, to give them oil of gladness in place of mourning, a glorious mantle instead of a listless spirit. You yourselves shall be named priests of the Lord. Ministers of our God shall you be called. I will give them their recompense faithfully. A lasting covenant I will make with them. Their descendants shall be renowned among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge them as a race the Lord has blessed. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the book of Revelation. Jesus Christ is the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, who has made us into a kingdom priests for his God and Father. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming amid the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. All the peoples of the earth will lament him. Yes, Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, the one who is, and who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand.
according to Jesus came to Nazareth where he had grown up and went to according to his custom in the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found a passage where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down, and the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. He said to them, Today, this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please remain standing. His Eminence, Gaudentio Cardinal Rosales, Archbishop Emeritus of Manila, His Excellency, Most Reverend Charles Brown, Apostolic Nuncio to the Philippines, His Excellency, Most Reverend Antonio Tobias, Bishop Emeritus of Novaliches, Dear brothers in the priesthood, persons in consecrated life, my dear seminarians, mga ginigiliw kong kapatid kay Kristo, salamat sa Diyos. Muli tayong tinipo ng Panginoon dito sa Manila Cathedral upang makapagdiwang nang maringal na misa ng banal na krisma sa araw ng Webes Santo. Dalawang taon din tayong pinigilan ng mga hard lockdown. Subalit ngayon, magkakasama tayo upang ipagdiwang ang Christmas. Salamat sa Diyos. At ako man ay nagpapasalamat din sa biyaya na makapagdiwang ng Christmas sa unang pagkakataon bilang inyong pastol dito sa Archdiocese of Manila. Ramdam na ramdam ko 
na dito rin sa Archdiocese of Manila, mahal na mahal nyo ang mga pari ninyo. Mahal na mahal nyo ang simbahan. Mahal na mahal nyo si Jesus. Salamat sa Diyos sa pagmamahal ninyo. Kasabay nito, ang pagdiriwang natin ng misa ngayon ay pakikisa rin sa mga nasalanta ng Bagyong Agaton sa Visayas. Alalahanin din natin sila ngayon sa ating mga panalangin. My dear brothers in the ordained ministry, Since last October, the Universal Church has been heeding the call of Pope Francis for a worldwide synodal process on the theme of synodality. From the time of the Apostles up to now, synodality has been the Church's preferred style of mission and life. Qualis Ecclesia, talis sacerdos. As the church, so the priest. And so if the church is to be synodal, she must have priests and ministers who are imbued with the spirit of synodality. As we celebrate this morning the grace of the priesthood we all share in Christ, let us consider well the priesthood in terms of the synodality of our church. In the original Greek, the word synod means together on the road. It comes from two, two Greek words, sin and hodos. The first word sin means with or same. This connotes fellowship, togetherness, accompaniment, and communion. As priests, we are never alone in our vocation. We are never in isolation. There is no such thing as a solo minister or a solo priest. We are not priests by our own capacity or left to our own faculties. Sacerdotium Es est con sacerdotium. To be a priest is to be a priest with. To be a priest is to be always in fellowship and communion. Our fundamental communion is with God Himself and with His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and High Priest. In the first reading on the Gospel we heard this morning, the anointed servant of the Lord says of himself, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Indeed, the Spirit of God is always with His servant, always with His priest. And so in our priestly ministry, let us also not abandon the Lord, but remain in His love, so that the more we stay with Jesus, the more we can become like Jesus. That is, in persona Christi Capitis, among His people, 
in the person of Christ, the head of the church, who is the high priest, and in whose person all of us ordained priests act when we offer and present the bread and wine during Mass. Indeed, our communion with God leads us to solidarity with His people. Being anointed by the Lord does not mean being above or ahead or apart from the people. God called His priests from among His people and so that they might act on behalf of the people. We are priests ministering with God's priestly people, shepherds who stay long enough with the sheep that we must have smelled like them. We witness to their expressions of prayer and faith, listen to their confessions of sins and doubts, attend to the hungry grumblings of their bodies and souls, and celebrate their gratitude and hope. Furthermore, this priestly communion with God's people is signified by obedience to and collaboration with the bishop as well as fraternal solidarity with the College of Presbyters. My dear brother priests, you are never alone in the ministry. I assure you that you have a father and brother in me and my successors, and that you have brothers in the persons of your fellow priests. Admittedly, fellowship and communion is not always easy. Sometimes hurts, frustrations, or difficulties do occur even with our brethren and companions in the ministry. And these difficult experiences often come with the temptation to dismiss the value of priestly synodality. We feel some desire to just concentrate on our personal task and chores, thinking that this might somehow keep us faithful to our mission. However, when we fall into the temptation of going solo, we will not only lose connection with others, but our prayer life and apostolic labors will also lack grounding, vigor, and joy. Fraternal communion is not a separate dimension alongside the mission. Rather, fraternal communion is mission itself. It is integral to the priestly vocation. Indeed, difficult experiences are even opportune times for priestly synodality. Like the olives that were pressed together to produce the oils that we consecrate today, let challenges give occasion for us to love each other more so that we can bring God's balm of healing and mercy to the world. The second Greek word that forms the word synod is 
hodos, which means road. It connotes journey, pilgrimage, renewal, and mission. Pope Francis emphasizes that he desires a church that is out on the streets rather than a church that just comfortably sits waiting in offices and institutions or confined in unhelpful structures or routines. Pope Francis even commented once that the church is like a bicycle. It can stand upright only when it is on the move. Tumatayo lang kung umaandar. And just as how oil is also used to facilitate the movement of bicycle gears. May the oils we bless and consecrate today remind us of the pilgrim movement of the church. Ecclesia semper in via. The church is ever on the way, ever on pilgrimage, ever on mission and her priests are likewise called to live out her missionary spirit in the first reading and the gospel we heard this morning we learned that to be anointed means to be sent to be on mission if we stop journeying on the way, we end up standing in the way. We become stumbling blocks to the faith progress of our people. If we cower in fear or sit in idleness instead of going on mission, let us allow the fire of missionary zeal to constantly burn in our priestly hearts. Let us let go of our rigidities and our attachments to comforts and conventions so that we can be available for mission. Let us keep going out and ministering to all so that the good news is brought to the poor, liberty is proclaimed to captives, sight is restored to the blind, and the freedom is given to the oppressed. My dear brother priests, as your pastor here in the Archdiocese of Manila, I personally thank you for exercising discernment, creativity, and courage in the ministry amid the drastic changes in the world today. I particularly appreciate the sacrifices you had to make during the pandemic. You have dared for newness for the sake of faithfulness to the mission. We are confident that by His mysterious action, God is blessing your labors and He makes them bear fruits in our people. Mga kapatid ko kay Kristo, ang sinodality ay hindi bago sa simbahan. Sinodality ang paraan ni Jesus at ng mga unang apostol. Ang sinodality ay nasa DNA ng pananampalataya natin. Ipagdasal natin ang buong simbahan na lalo panawang maganap ang sinodality sa atin. Ipagdasal ninyo 
kaming mga pari ninyo upang maging mas matapat at masigasig kami sa pagbubuklod at pagmimisyon. O Maria, Ina ng simbahan, Ina ng mga pari, ipanalangin mo kami. Amen. May we request all the priests to please stand. Beloved sons, on the anniversary of that day, when Christ our Lord conferred His priesthood on His apostles and on us, are you resolved to renew in the presence of your bishop and God's holy people the promises you once made? Are you resolved to be more united with the Lord Jesus and more closely conformed to Him denying yourselves and confirming those promises about sacred duties towards Christ's Church, which prompted by, by love of Him, you willingly and joyfully pledged on the day of your priestly ordination? Are you resolved to be faithful stewards of the mysteries of God in the Holy Eucharist and the other liturgical rites, and to discharge faithfully the sacred office of teaching, following Christ the Head and Shepherd, not seeking any gain, but moved only by zeal for souls. Please all stand. As for, our, as for you, dearest sons and daughters, pray for your priests that the Lord may pour out His gifts abundantly upon them and keep them faithful as ministers of Christ the High Priest so that they may lead you to Him who is the source of salvation. Pray also for me, that I may be faithful to the apostolic office entrusted to me in my lowliness, and that in your midst I may be made day by day a living and more perfect image of Christ, the priest, the good shepherd, the teacher, and the servant of all.
Let us pray for the sick, aged, and dying priests. Beg the Lord to give them strength to unite their suffering with the sufferings of Christ for their sanctification and of the Church. May the Lord keep us all in His charity and lead all of us, shepherds and flock, to eternal life. Amen.
Narito po at tanggapin nang ito ay pabanalin ang langis na aming hain. Magiging Kris masa amin bigay ng Diyos na butihin. Brothers and sisters, with gratitude to God, Lord of life and of death, we gather the oil, fruit of the earth, and of human work. Let us bless the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who sent His Son to heal those who are brokenhearted and to cure our infirmities. Let us invoke the spirit of consolation that all those who shall be anointed with this oil may be freed from sin and receive consolation and life. God of all consolation, you chose and sent your Son to heal the world. Graciously listen to our prayer of faith. Send the power of your Holy Spirit, the Consoler, into this precious oil this soothing ointment, this rich gift, this fruit of the earth. Bless this oil and sanctify it for our use. Make this oil a remedy for all who are anointed with it. Heal them in body, in soul, and in spirit, and deliver them from every affliction. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
Let us pray that God, our Almighty Father, will bless this oil so that all who are anointed with it may be inwardly transformed and come to share in eternal salvation. God, our Maker, source of all growth in holiness, accept the joyful thanks and praise we offer in the name of your Church. In the beginning, at your command, the earth produced fruit-bearing trees. From the fruit of the olive tree, you have provided us with oil for holy chrism. The prophet David sang of the life and joy that the oil would bring us in the sacraments of your love. After the avenging flood, the dove returning to Noah with an olive, olive branch announced your gift of peace. This was a sign of a greater gift to come. Now the waters of baptism wash away the sins of men, and by the anointing with olive oil, you make us radiant with joy. At your command, Aaron was washed with water, and your servant Moses' his brother anointed him priest. This too foreshadowed greater things to come. After your son Jesus Christ, our Lord, asked John for baptism in the waters of Jordan, you sent the Spirit upon, the, upon him in the form of a dove, and by the witness of your own voice, you declared him to be your only well-beloved son. In this, you clearly fulfilled the prophecy of David, that Christ would be anointed with the oil of gladness beyond his fellow men. And so, Father, we ask you to bless this oil you have created. Fill it with the power of your Holy Spirit through Christ your Son. It is from him that Chrism takes its name, and with Chrism you have anointed. You have anointed for yourself priests and kings, prophets and martyrs. Make this chrism a sign of life and salvation for those who are to be born again in the waters of baptism. Wash away the evil they have inherited from sinful Adam, and when they are anointed with this holy oil, make them temples of your glory, radiant with the goodness of life that has its source in you. Through this sign of chrism, Grant them royal, priestly, and prophetic honor, and clothe them with incorruption. Let this be indeed a chrism of salvation for those who will be born again of water and the Holy Spirit. May they come to share eternal life in the glory of your kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
seated. Our collection for this Mass will be given to our brothers and sisters in Leyte, Samar, and Capiz who were affected by Typhoon Agaton. Thank you for your generosity. Please stand.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His Holy Church. May the power of this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, mercifully wipe away what is old in us and increase in us grace of salvation and newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the new and eternal covenant, and by your wondrous design, we're pleased to decree that his one priesthood should continue in the Church. For Christ not only adorns with the royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness, he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifice of human redemption, to set before your children the paschal banquet, to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word and strengthen them with the sacraments. As they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. And all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, 
for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said a blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the, salva for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may be, we obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the wall, all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen.
please stand. Let us pray. We beseech you, Almighty God, that those you renew by your sacraments may merit to become the pleasing fragrance of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. As we thank the Lord for the gift of the priesthood, we also congratulate our brothers for their 25 years of service and dedication to the Church. Let me read the citation. In thanksgiving to the Lord, the giver of all graces, His Eminence, Jose F. Cardinal Advincula, Archbishop of Manila, and the clergy of the Archdiocese of Manila gratefully recognize name of the Jubilarian for his 25 years in the priestly ministry as a faithful steward of the mysteries of Christ. God's people were reborn in the waters of baptism nourished with the living bread and the word of life, renewed through the sacraments and led in faith, hope, and love. Given on the 14th day of April 2022 at the Minor Basilica of the Immaculate Conception, Manila Cathedral, Intramuros, Manila. Signed, Jose F. Cardinal Advincula, Archbishop of Manila. This year's silver jubilarians are the following. Reverend Father Domingo Asuncion. Reverend Father Edison Escario. <clears throat> Reverend Father Andy Lim. Reverend Father Leo Nilo Mangusad. <clears throat> Reverend Father Estelito Villegas. Reverend Father Alex Abiera, LRMS. <clears throat> Reverend Father Peterson Tieng, LRMS. Reverend Father Reo Jose Galloy, OFM.
Two of our brothers are assigned abroad, Reverend Father Renante Centillas and Reverend Father Paul John Camiring. After the Mass, the priests are requested to leave their vestments and booklets on their seats. The priests are also requested to exit through the left transit door for the distribution of the holy oils. Thank you. Please stand. Dearest brothers, from Christ, Master, Priest, and Pastor, we have been called to the order of the priesthood. In this Eucharistic celebration, we have willed to renew our commitment to live in a manner always worthy of the vocation we have received. We have also blessed the chrism and the oil of the sick, to emphasize the mystery of the Church as a sacrament of Christ who sanctifies every reality and situation of life. To you, brother bishops and priests, they are now entrusted in order that through your ministry, divine grace, bringer of strength and life, may flow in the souls. Respect, venerate, and protect with particular care these oils, signs of God's grace, the persons, the places, and things that will be blessed by them may radiate the very holiness of God, who by a marvelous gift of His love has willed that in the sacramental signs the events of salvation history might be mystically renewed. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.